You're watching a video from the Alley Church, located in Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Glory, Jesus. Glory, glory. All right, let's read from Matthew 28 this morning. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's gone before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I've told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came up to them and said, greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and go to Galilee and there they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. But, uh, I don't know if you have Easter uh, traditions or things that uh, you normally do on uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, I'm the son of a preacher man, so our routine early in the mornings on Sunday East, uh, of Easter were kind of routine because uh, I was a son of a preacher man. But uh, one of the traditions that I know, you can bring me down a little bit because I feel like I'm in a trash can. All right. Um, one of the traditions that our family had was that uh, I knew that uh, every year during Easter time, something was going uh, to happen. And uh, it was the uh, one day of the year that I knew that I was going to get to dress up, okay? <laughs> so it was kind of a tradition. Like, I never owned suspenders or a bow tie or slacks or a coat or anything. But I knew that on Easter Sunday, um, I would get a brand new outfit uh, the week before, I would go and get an amazing uh, haircut. And, and here's all they knew about Easter, is that Easter Sunday meant, uh, I'm going to look good. I'm going to look good, you know? And so um, now that my mom stopped dressing me a couple of years ago, um, uh, I do my best, okay? But uh, I, I was always kind of confused as a kid. Wondering what Easter was really, really all about. And um, I don't know, I thought maybe this morning we could spend a few minutes just talking about the point of Easter. <coughs> Why did we come here? Why did somebody invite us here? Why did we spend this morning together to gather? What really is the point of Easter? And I, what, I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you this morning about the two invitations of Easter. And if you have a Bible this morning, I'd love for you to look at Matthew 28, the text we just read. And I would like to just go verse by verse and line by line. And maybe in the middle of that, we can see the point of Easter. Now, it's one thing to gather and to hear me talk to you about Easter. It's another thing to gather and hear from someone who was there, from an eyewitness from someone who saw and experienced the resurrected Jesus. So it's one thing to come and listen to a, as I say, a Latino from the South on what he thinks Easter is about. It's another thing to open up the scriptures and to hear from Matthew, who was one of the eyewitnesses who, who stood next to, smelt, heard, and saw the resurrected king. And so here are his words in Matthew 28 as we think about the two invitations of Easter. Verse 1, now after the Sabbath toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb and behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and he sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow, 
And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. There's no need for fear. I know there might be a time for that. I, I know that even as you approach this place, there was probably some fear and anxiety on what would happen. But the angel's message is do not be afraid. And I love this next phrase. Listen to what he says. For I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. Here's what he says. I know you came looking for someone. I know you came searching and seeking and looking for someone. I know that today is not an accident. There is purpose in this moment, the angel says. And whatever you've been seeking and whatever you've been searching and whatever has been that emptiness in your life where you've tried everything possibly at the tomb, the empty tomb, you can find what you're really looking for. I know why you're here. The angel says, you're searching, you're looking, you're, you're trying to see, he says. Verse 6, he's not here. He's risen, as he said. The angel's like, he's not here, he's risen, just like he said. Did y'all miss that conversation? Like, he talked about this all the time. Did you get, not get the memo? Because <laughs> he's, he's talking all his time with his disciples and in front of people. He, he talked about this. Oh, so you thought that the whole destroyed the temple and raised it in three days was actually about the temple? You're bad. Because <laughs> he's risen. He is not here. And then the two invitations. I love these two invitations. These two invitations changed my life. Come and see. Come and see the place where he lay. That's invitation one. Come and see. There's no need to be afraid. You may have a thousand reasons in the past to be afraid. But all of that fear, all of that anxiety has been conquered. So come and see. Come and see where he lay. And then verse 7, the second invitation. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead and behold, he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I've told you. So they departed quickly. Go and tell. Come and see and go and tell. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. There are the two invitations of Easter. Come and see and go and tell. Both of those invitations stand at the heart of the Easter story. Not one can stand alone. They stand together. Come and see. Don't be afraid. I know why you're here. I know what you're looking for. I know that there's something missing in you. We all know something's missing. So come and see. But when you come and you see, be ready to go and tell. Go and tell. It's both come and see and go and tell. And verse 9, I love verse 9. And behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. I love this, the resurrected king. The very first words he says is, hi. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Isn't that awesome, man? Now the word greetings comes from the word rejoice. These are the first words of the resurrected king. 
Rejoice! Rejoice! No need to fear. Instead, rejoice. Or another translation would be, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> but the point is there's no room for fear and plenty of room for rejoicing. And they came up and took hold of his feet They worshiped him. I mean, what else are you going to do? They worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, pretty much the same thing that the angel said Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go and what? Tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Come and see and go and tell. These are the invitations of Easter. So somebody's here today that is not here by accident because the Spirit of God and the message of God was to come and see. No looking at your past. No looking at all that's happened before. The risen king has had victory over that. Now come and see. Come and see. Do not be afraid. Come and see. And the second message is to go and to tell. And for somebody in this room, you've come and seen. You've come and seen for 40 years. Now it's time to go and tell. Now it's time to go and tell. That's the point of Easter. Those are the two invitations of Easter. A pastor brother of mine, I love how he puts these invitations of Easter and the point of Easter. A guy by the name of Greg Finke. Look at these words. These events, the suffering and dying and the rising of Jesus, are means to God's greater end. You see, God has a mission and the death and resurrection of his son for the forgiveness of your sins are key means to his end. So what's the point of the cross? What's the point of the empty tomb? What's the point of your being forgiven and freed from sin? The point is the mission of God. Amen. That's the point. The mission of God. Simply put, God wants his world back. From Genesis 3.15, when man and creation was separated because of man's sin, from that moment on all the way to the resurrection, God's mission is to get his world back. Yeah. One at a time. Not some of it, not most of it, the whole thing. That's the mission, that's the goal, that's the point. And the scriptures don't leave any ambiguity. Look at John 3.16. For God so loved what? The world. The world. That he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Paul doesn't leave any ambiguity. Colossians 1.20. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. I don't know if you've read the end of the book, but the end of the book says the same thing. Revelation 21, 5. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. As he, also, he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and they're true. That is the point 
of Easter. Jesus says to you and Jesus says to me, join me. Come and see and then join me in my Father's mission to get this whole world back. Not just you, not just the church, not just this church, the whole world. For God so loved the world. He says, I got, I got you back. I got the church back. I got the alley back. But I want it all. I want your, your neighborhood. I want your school. I want your family. I want your spouse. I want your one crazy uncle. Everybody's got one. <laughs> and if you don't know who it is, guess what? It's you, brother. <laughs> Come and see, brother. Come and see. I want it all back. See, now we know what we get to do, right? I mean, now we know what we're a part of now. Come and see. Worship, yes. Worship the risen king, yes. Worship that our debt's been paid, yes. Worship that one day we will be with him forever, yes. Come and see, but please don't forget to go and tell. Don't forget to go and tell. I love Jesus tell the story in Luke 15. Luke 15, 1 to 7. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So we told him this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he's lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go? After the one that is lost until he what? Finds it. And when he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me for I have found my sheep that was lost, just so I tell you. In other words, Jesus says, let me translate this for you. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. It seems to Jesus that one, not having still one, is not enough. He wants them all. It seems to Jesus 99 isn't enough. He wants them all. So will you and I, will we join Jesus in that? Because in Luke 19, Jesus says why he's here. Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. There is a lost sheep in our neighborhood, in our workplace, in our family. And all I want to tell you this morning is Jesus got you back. But he's not done yet. And the invitation today is for us to come and see and worship, regardless of your past, regardless of what's happened, regardless of some of that pain, regardless of some of those bad decisions. The invitation for some of you is just to simply come and see that God has paid a debt for you. And on the third day, God accepts it. But it's also an invitation for those of us who've received that to go and tell 
Matthew records, don't be afraid, come and see and go and tell. Matthew invites us into the mission of God and he connects, don't be afraid with go and tell. He connects the two. How do we know those things are important? Because he records it twice. That's how we know it's important. Don't be afraid. Go and tell. He connects. Why? Because there's something in you and there's something in me that loves to come and see, but we're afraid to go and tell. Mm. Mm. So Matthew connects the two. And he says, this is the invitation. The invitation is to come and see. He's not here. He has risen. Now the other invitation is to go and tell. And I know there's something in you. And I know there's something in me. And there's this fear. And the Bible's telling us, Jesus is telling us, don't be afraid. Go and tell. Why don't we need to be afraid? I think Paul lays it out. Romans 8, 11. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. In other words, you have everything you need to go and tell. We have everything we could possibly need. There ain't a class to take. There ain't no training to take. You got the Spirit of God in you. To go. And to tell, we've been given the power of the resurrected king. We have been given the spirit of God that raised Jesus back to life. And the point of Easter is that God wants it all back. And he's inviting us into that mission. He's inviting us into that mission. Now, I want to say something this morning. And um, I know there's guests here. um, But I, I... I felt compelled to talk about this today because I know one of the biggest headlines that's happening in our world is school shootings. And, and it's everywhere and everybody is talking about what needs to happen and, and I'm not here to tell you what to vote on or what laws to pass. I, I don't, I don't want to say anything about that, but here's what I do want to help us see today. That out of The 10 deadliest shootings, Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook, Majority Stoneman Douglas, just recently, Umqua Community College, Red Lake Senior High School, Oikos University, West Nickel Mines, Northern Illinois University, Maryville Pilchuck High School, and the University of Arizona. After Columbine, these were the major deadliest school shootings. You want to know how many people actually did the attacks? One. Other than Columbine, every single school shooting happened by one. So maybe, maybe you can, in your conscience of the Holy Spirit, vote on some things, praise God. But I don't want you to miss this. We have something that is more powerful. We have something that has far greater power, and it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And students, you know the one at your school. You see them every day. But can you leave your nine for a season to go and seek the one? You know the one at your job. You know the one in your neighborhood. You know the one in your family. 
We know the one. And Jesus, the resurrected king, says, I don't just want the 99. I want the one because I want them all back. And you and I get to be invited into the mission of God to go and seek and save those who are lost, even if it means just one. Just one. Just one today. These are the invitations of Easter. Come and see. Your debt's been paid. There's not a thing you got to do. The cross, the empty tomb, it's destroyed sin. It's destroyed death. And it's destroyed the power of the devil. Come and see. Yes, you. Yes, you. You with your past. Yes, you. You with all your broken relationships. Yes, you. You with all that emptiness, you with all that anger, you with all that pride, yes, you're welcome. Come and see. He's good. He wants you. But let us not forget the second invitation to go and to tell. You know the one. I know the one. We know the one. The point of Easter is God wants it all back. And isn't it the same message post-Easter? The resurrected king shows up to his disciples, has to go have a conversation with Thomas. (laughs) I don't know if you've ever seen anybody walk through a door. I haven't. Throw my hands. Touch my side. Look at my feet. And then he's preparing to leave. And look at these words. These are the last words of Jesus to his disciples. Look at these words. Matthew 28, 19. What's the first word? Go. 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 As you're going, as you walk out that door, you get in your car, as you're going, go therefore and make disciples of what? All, not some, not the ones we like, not the ones we're comfortable with. All, every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. He wants it all back. Of all nations, baptizing them, bringing them into the family of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus last words. So Jesus says, Come and see. Especially if you're coming and seen and you think you have no place with the resurrected king. The resurrected king says you have a place with me. You have a place in my home. Come and see. Come home today, he says. But if you've come home, don't forget to go and tell. No fear. You have the power of the resurrected king. You know the one and I know the one. You know the one at your school. You know the one at your job. You know the one in your neighborhood. Now go and tell. You have the spirit of God living in you. So Jesus, his last words is a commission to join the mission to go. May we take and make Jesus' last words our first words. Our first words. That's the invitation of Easter. Come and see. Go and tell. Right? We hear this in Matthew 4, 19. Come, follow me, and I will make you a shepherd who goes out for the one. That's my translation. Come and see. Go and tell. Those are the invitations of Easter. 
He's risen. He's risen indeed. Thank you for listening to this podcast from The Alley Church. More can be found at thealley.org. Follow Jesus, live love.